Good evening. This is Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Dr. Anne Kerr, the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, is with us to talk about how we can anticipate the future of UK business development in Hong Kong. Dr. Kerr is managing director for the Greater China Business Sector of Mott McDonald, a management, engineering and development consultancy headquartered in the United Kingdom. She arrived here as a graduate more than 30 years ago and has been involved in many strategic projects which have shaped Hong Kong's development, including the current development of our international airport. Welcome, Anne. Thank you very much indeed, Eugene. It's such a great pleasure to be here. Right, great to have you, Anne. Um, maybe you can start by sharing with the viewers, by telling us about your past and your role as the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Thank you very much indeed. So really interesting uh, that I came to Hong Kong, as you said, as a graduate and was involved in the Chamber of Commerce. I was looking at uh, the opportunities for networking, for connecting outside of my in immediate uh, professional sector. So the Chamber of Commerce was suggested to me as a good place to make new friends connect with mm -hmm. people from other sectors that were relevant as well. Uh, to the way that we do business. So for the last 27 years, I've been involved in committees and in the uh, various committees for the Chamber and have also been Vice Chair and currently I'm the Chair of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so I have had quite a large portion of my professional career associated with the Chamber of Commerce and had a huge amount of joy and enjoyment and also a massive amount of interaction with people uh, from Hong Kong, from the UK and from many other places learning about trade, business and opportunities. Right, and um, since you've been in Hong Kong for over 30 years and you're like 27 years with the Chamber, it's quite a, a remarkable um, support or actually a contribution to the, to the actual Chamber. Maybe you can tell the viewers how many actually, uh, do you have the numbers, say how many UK businesses are actually current operating in Hong Kong and, and what type of business do they mainly do and what type of level of investment are they doing in Hong Kong? Are they just doing a very pr pr primitive level uh, or really uh, sort of a very major investment in Hong Kong? Interesting uh, question because uh, there are many different types of people who are involved in uh, operations in business in Hong Kong. We have over 640 uh, businesses associated with the Chamber who are uh, headquartered in the UK and who are operating in Hong Kong and in other places. We have many uh, other businesses that are small and medium enterprises who are coming here to do trade, who are doing uh, commercial activities, who are innovation um, entrepreneurs, who are doing uh, startups. About 4,500 4, startups uh, right. in Hong Kong, many of whom actually emanate from the UK. Uh, in terms of the investment, uh, it's quite significant investment uh, that is being uh, put into Hong Kong because Hong Kong is seen as the centre uh, in many places and in many cases the centre of investment uh, into China mainland as well as westwards uh, back into the Western uh, world. Mm -hmm. So since, I mean, little of since we all know that Hong Kong has a very strong tie with the UK because of the history, and, and, and of course, the British Chamber of Commerce is sort of a very a notable organization in Hong Kong. How many people do you think are actually associated with the 640 plus businesses uh, in Hong Kong? I mean, do you think a large Hong Kong population sort of operate or sort of employed by the businesses? So over the years, people have given different uh, statements as to the percentage of people who are associated now and aligned with British businesses and at times people were talking about 40% uh, of the working force uh, was associated with British businesses. I'm not quite sure of the current uh, numbers and I wouldn't like to be quoted uh, on that as being a, a figure for today mm -hmm. uh, but I would say that there's a large number of people who have an association. I think it's also important to understand many people have been to university or school right. uh, in the UK and have an affinity so what uh, we're looking at at the moment is the association with alumni uh, and also people who have some connection. Many people are also uh, looking at how they can operate from Hong Kong into UK as being a very good trading partner. Right. Uh, so uh, it's a two-way flow actually. So many, many people have got some connection or another. Right, and, and uh, I'll, I'll have to go back to your position as a chair at the British Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, and I'm, I'm sure most business chambers will try to facilitate networking opportunities, 
for both um, Hong Kong businesses to the UK and vice versa. And how effective has that been in recent years? I mean, you've been there like 27 years. Things have changed in Hong Kong and the world. Let's, let's face the reality. Has it become easier or become more challenging? Many questions in that question, I yes. think. Uh, if I may pick up on uh, the the connections uh, and uh, the benefits. I think the benefits uh, that the Chamber can offer to the business community and also to society in Hong Kong is that uh, we do a variety of things. One is our advocacy. So we always prepare a policy address for the Hong Kong government. So one of the things that we look at is uh, the committees that we operate. We've got over 20 committees that are specialist committees, including financial services, because the financial markets are so incredibly strong and so important uh, for our members and also for the economy. So looking at the financial services, we provide input into the policy address. We also provide input from climate change, from other aspects in terms of logistics, in terms of cargo, in terms of tourism, uh, marketing, other aspects in terms of uh, infrastructure and development. Uh, looking to see how we can uh, assist, mm -hmm. aid and provide our perspectives because many of the members are not just working in UK or Hong Kong but many of the uh, people are working across the world. So we are seeing current trends, we are seeing what are the uh, future trends and opportunities. So we think that the policy part is a very important uh, uh, part of our advocacy work. We also do a lot of uh, engagement with governments. Mm -hmm. So we work uh, very closely with the Hong Kong government uh, in terms of sharing uh, what we understand our sentiment, etc. We engage with the UK government, we engage with the China Liaison Office, right. Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and so we have been building up over the years and I think more effectively over the last few years we've been building up very very strong relationships with all governments to help provide all the information and also to inform on a broader basis rather than having monoprismatic views. Right. Being so Chair I'm going to ask you one direct question this time rather than questions in questions. How would you describe the current state of UK business presence in Hong Kong? Uh, is, it is it increasing, managing the same level or actually decreasing? The UK business presence in Hong Kong is very, very constant. Uh, it goes up and down, it fluctuates, uh, but at the moment it is very much, uh, I would say, on a small positive green shoot in an increase. Right. Okay. And how would you, how would your members feel about the, the Hong Kong market? What, what are the actual confidence level in Hong Kong? Because we all know that Hong Kong has been through some challenging times, like many places in the world. We know changes are imminent. Um, this challenge is sort of sort of bigger than before because it's very based on our current economy and our and our businesses things are changing. Some Hong Kong people are not as confident as before. That's the reason why we invite you to the show and, and tell us how are the your members see Hong Kong right now? It is a question that we're asked many, many times and we have just been speaking about this this week, about the confidence in the market and I would say that it depends on which sector you're dealing with. Uh, in general, the general perspective is that there are green shoots mm -hmm. and generally we would say that there are positive signs. Uh, the degree of positive, positivity is the thing that is uh, dependent on which sector you're in. So for example, in food and beverage, in retail, these are still uh, areas uh, of uh, the economy that are recovering from uh, the brutal uh, shift uh, that we've had uh, over the last uh, few years because of pandemic and so forth. But remembering we've only just really had just over a year of being out of restrictions and measures uh, associated with the pandemic. And uh, the recovery takes some time. Everywhere in the world has had uh, difficulties and challenges. So I think that Hong Kong is showing itself, and I think members also recognize Hong Kong is showing itself to be what it's very good at, and that is resilient and right. bouncing back. The bounce might not be as big and as fast as we all had expected and hoped, I think, in the middle of last year, but it is coming. Yes. Um, we know that there have been challenges and you said some are recovering faster, some are still sort of, I think the F&B industry we know is struggling a bit compared to the others. So what are the, the niche in Hong Kong that you think UK businesses are still staying here, I mean knowing that it's going to work eventually because even if you're going to anticipate things going to be better, there must be some good foundation that you think Hong Kong has that opportunity. Common law. Right. English as one of the business languages, multiple languages, 
also are helpful and there are many languages that are used and operated in in Hong Kong but also the fact is that English is one of the very strong common uh, languages uh, for business that really does give a lot of confidence uh, because people can uh, communicate very easily and it's all about in business it's all about communication it's about building trust and so trusted relationships we have seen many trusted relationships have been built and have remained very strong with foundations. Right, I'm going to ask you one last question before we go to the break. We know that um, there has been in the news that a lot of expatriates have left Hong Kong because of the during the COVID time, because our, our restrictions were a, a bit harsh to many families. So some people left because of the families and all that. Have you seen the numbers actually continue to leave Hong Kong or you seen the other way around? So I, as you have mentioned, I have been here for many, many years and all the time we have seen people go, we've see, seen people come. We saw people leaving during the pandemic, absolutely, uh, because mostly these were families uh, and there were some difficulties with families for schooling and so forth. Uh, but we have seen people coming back, absolutely seen people coming back. And what's also interesting, these might be new families that are coming back with younger families, with younger children. But they also are families who have been relocated in other places during COVID times and they are returning to Hong Kong because it is such an incredible place to live, to work, to raise your family, mm -hmm. to enjoy okay. life and to have fun. Right. And let's take a break now. But viewers, stay tuned. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us on Straight Talk. Anne Kerr, the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, is with us to talk about how we can anticipate the future of UK business development in Hong Kong. So Anne, in the first half, you have told us you've been here for many years and there are up and downs uh, of people coming and going from the UK businesses. And you said the common law and also English, English language, et cetera, et cetera, are the, the niche of Hong Kong, especially you can uh, stay based in Hong Kong and move into the mainland. That will be the main point you have made. Am I correct? Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you, the, with all the challenges happening in the world, especially in Hong Kong with the geopolitics, we are, which we are not going to go into today, we want to talk about businesses. I mean, businesses do look at where you make the most profit, where it is safe. So has Hong Kong changed in any way compared to before? Like we had the Article 23, we had the national security legislation coming through. What are your members' views on all that? Is Hong Kong just as attractive or even more attractive than before? I think it's really interesting to start looking at uh, things uh, from the perspective of have they changed? Yes, Hong Kong has changed, but everywhere in the world has changed. I think also uh, from a security perspective and from a safety perspective, I travel in many places for work. I have to say, I still think that Hong Kong is one of the safest places I have ever been in, in in the world. I also talk to different people at different ages and uh, also uh, people uh, operating in different ways. They also have the same point about Hong Kong being a very safe place uh, to live and work. And especially, I would have to say from a female's perspective, I would not like to take a cab in uh, some other cities around the world at three o'clock in the morning. But in Hong Kong, no issue at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just now you mentioned in the first half that the, one of the work that the Chamber does is having uh, input to the, um, the policy address. And you know, I'll, I'll see you deliver his second policy address in February, which is entitled A Vibrant Economy for a Caring Community. Were there any changes in that that impact UK businesses? And are they positive or negative? So there are many aspects in the policy address that are very good opportunities uh, for British businesses. And uh, I think development is part particularly important uh, to mention in this uh, case. So British businesses are uh, also not just centred around financial services, but of course, uh, from the perspective that I come from, so in development planning and in the construction industry, which operates uh, very strongly here uh, in Hong Kong and uh, employs many, many uh, of the population. Uh, we see many opportunities coming forward. There are different uh, opportunities. It's not just about development. There are huge development plans and the pipeline of projects is quite considerable right. for projects. Yeah, and you see that we have an increasing integration with the, the Greater Bay Area. How is that in, I mean, affect the UK businesses? 
I see some integration with the Greater Bay Area, uh, but there's still a way to go, I think. And I would suggest that perhaps the northern metropolis is more uh, relevant uh, oh, to nice the it. British businesses than the Greater Bay Area, because again, the northern metropolis is part of Hong Kong and it's part of familiar territory for mm. working in. Right. And how about I mean, other, and we are starting to sh uh, shift the focus to the ASEAN and also the Middle East. How do you see that? So interesting uh, because uh, many of us have very strong connections within ASEAN and as I mentioned in the first half, uh, half of the world's population is within five hours flying time, so naturally within ASEAN. Uh, strong connections but stronger connections could be made and again there are very, very uh, tight uh, relationships in terms of uh, development opportunities as well as the financial markets and so forth. Right, so so far you see things are quite positive. For the, for the UK businesses and as you know many of our officials do watch this program maybe if I'm going to ask you what are the most common challenges faced by our, our UK businesses in Hong Kong that you think the government can lend a hand to anything that you can think of it's a very interesting question uh, because I think actually Hong Kong is a very e personally I think it's a very easy place uh, to do business. Uh, one of the things that we could do perhaps uh, or we could see more of is uh, a little bit more in terms of timelines uh, for the opportunities coming uh, forward and perhaps a little bit more uh, positivity uh, as well and perhaps a little bit more outward uh, uh, promotion of Hong Kong. Right. I'm going to touch on one more area before we go back to Hong Kong itself. You know, we all know about the Brexit. Brexit has has made I mean UK in a very challenging position as well. How has that affected the UK businesses, especially those that operations in Hong Kong? Will you be spending more effort into this part of the world or you want to go back and rebuild the British economy? Oh, I've been here for a very long time, as many people have, uh, and I think that we want to stay here. Absolutely. Right. This is our home. This is where business gets done and this is where business gets done very effectively and efficiently. We have opportunities. I think that's why many uh, people choose to make Hong Kong their home. Actually, many uh, people come here for the traditional two or three year contracts and mm -hmm. stay for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a Global Talent Summit recently in Hong Kong and according to Secretary uh, Chris Tan, we had close to 200 and 290,000 applications where we have approved 180,000 and 120,000 applicants are already in Hong Kong. Do you think this type of scheme is attractive to, I mean, the, the UK business people? Because one of the so-called criticisms by the press saying that, oh, we're getting a lot of people coming, but majority are with a, a Chinese background, like they could be Chinese that will study overseas, which I, I don't think there should be a problem. but. It would be nice to have more people from the, the traditional Western partners like the UK. Is that attractive to the people in UK to come to Hong Kong right now? The schemes are very attractive. But if we may touch on something slightly more delicate, uh, the, the narrative in the press is not uh, helpful. Uh, right. because people read press, they look at uh, the media and so forth and uh, they make their judgments. What I think people should do is actually come here and have a look uh, and see uh, the benefits that there are. When people come, uh, we see quite a lot of youngsters coming in and they're coming just to have a look and see what are the opportunities and they're all, I think the expression is blown away. Right. Uh, and uh, other people have been coming. We've had some uh, ministers and other business people from uh, UK who haven't been uh, in Hong Kong ever in their lives. And they come and they are absolutely amazed at what they see. So I, I think it, the message is come, have a look and see and don't just read the papers. Right. I mean, I'm sure the viewers by now who have watched your uh, programme knowing that you are a person who loves Hong Kong of very course. much and more Hong Kong people than even more other people think. What will be, let's move on to an area in the second part of the, the show, of your specialty. Um, you've been in Hong Kong for like over 30 years. You're in constructions. I think you were involved in the, the airport, the runway. When it's completed, do you think the numbers traveling to Hong Kong will reach sort of a pre-COVID level again? Oh, I'm absolutely confident in the numbers uh, returning uh, to pre-COVID levels and beyond. And actually we're at about 70%, I think, of uh, visitors coming in uh, compared to uh, COVID times. Uh, also, the airport is not just for people, but the airport is for cargo and the 
cargo numbers uh, going through Hong Kong airport are number one in the world. So it has a very, very dominant uh, position. And I absolutely believe that the airport is uh, one of the most efficient airports. Seriously, it is one of the easiest to move through, to navigate through, and it is one of the most advanced as yeah, well. We used to be number one airport in the world. I think not recently, though. Do you think it will go back of up course. again? Of course, absolutely. I'm absolutely confident of it. Right. And you mentioned about cargo. I mean, can you tell us a bit more about cargo? Because Hong Kong has always been sort of a middle person between the mainland and the rest of the world. But with all these new ports opening in mainland, people say that Hong Kong's, like the container business, has, has decreased a lot because we're not as competitive. Do you, see, do you still see that as one of our, our strengths in years to come? And, uh and how do we do that? So that's a really interesting question because we always used to think uh, when <clears throat> when I first came to Hong Kong, we always thought the airport and the seaport uh, were uh, equal, equal uh, in terms of their ranking. Uh, in more recent times, so I think it's about uh, consumer uh, spend and uh, what people are looking for. So the seaport uh, has declined slightly and the airport has risen. Uh, and so what we're seeing is uh, the companies like Amazon and other um, uh, courier companies are putting a massive amount of uh, throughput uh, through Hong Kong airport. It's something like 40 percent of online sales from Amazon goes through the international airport. So I think that's about consumer spend. So I think there has been a shift in the way that uh, materials are being moved around. People are looking for something within 24 hours or less from clicking that button mm -hmm. on the I want to buy. Mm -hmm. But if you're still looking at major components, then you would still use uh, the seaport. So I, I think it's horses for courses, as they say. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you the last question, the last 30 seconds of the show. What advice would you give your 20-year-old 20, 20 self today about moving to and living in Hong Kong? Get out there very fast, enjoy and take all the advantages and enjoy all the opportunities that you might see in Hong Kong. It is a wonderful place to be, to live, to work, to make friends and to have business relationships. Right. Are you going to retire in Hong Kong? Of course. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank, Thank you, you, Anne, for sharing your insights despite the challenges of a dynamic landscape for UK businesses in Hong Kong. The opportunities for continued growth are indeed compelling, as we all know that Hong Kong is where business gets done. As UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said, the deep bond between Hong Kong and the United Kingdom will continue to be a beacon of stability and prosperity in the Asia-Pacific, guiding us towards an even brighter shared future. Have a good evening and see you next week.